Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem ugly number. We're given an integer n and we want to return true if n is an ugly number. And if it's not an ugly number, we return false. What exactly is an ugly number? Well, it's a positive integer whose prime factors are limited to two, three, and five. So they say prime factors. So that we are gonna need to know a little bit of math background for this problem. And I think that's probably, if you struggle with this problem, that's probably why you probably just forgot the math needed for this problem. So I'll give you a quick refresher on that. And then once we do that, this, the problem solution is actually pretty simple. The code is simple, just kind of understanding the math behind it is what we need to do. First of all, what are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers such as two, three, or five, where the factors of these numbers, for example, what are the factors of five? The factors are one and five, right? Either it's you know itself or the value one. Any number who has factors that are just itself and one, mean that basically means that this number is a prime number. Now, what about one itself? Is one a prime number? By definition, no, one is not a prime number. So these are prime numbers. Six is not a prime number because it's it has some factors, two and three, right? Multiply two and three together, we get six. So therefore, six is not a prime number, but six is an ugly number. As you can see on the left, we return true if we get n equals six because when we do the prime factorization of this number six, we get these two numbers, two and three, right? We can't break two down any more, right? And it makes sense why we can't break two down anymore because it's a prime number, right? That's pretty much told to us. We can break it down into one and two, and then we can do that forever if we really want to, but we're not getting anywhere, right? Because two does not have any factors that are not prime numbers. So it can't be broken down anymore. Similarly with three, right? We can break it down into three and one, and that's all we can do because this is also a prime number. So we can see that this whole idea of prime factorization is definitely gonna be useful in determining if a number is ugly or not. Let's keep going. So let's take another example, 20. Let's try to prime factorize this number. Uh, you know, we can take two and 10, right? So now we've gotten uh, some factors. We, we, if we multiply these two, we'll get 20, right? So these are factors of 20. We can't break down two anymore, right? But what about 10? This can be broken down into two and five, right? This five can not be broken down, neither can this two, neither can this two. So we saw that, yeah, we broke this number down and we broke it down into two, two, and five. And these are all within these factors that we're allowed to have, right? So 20 is yes, an ugly number. Let's take a counter example, 14. If we try breaking this down, we can get two and seven, right? Two cannot be further broken down, it's a prime number. Can seven be broken down further? It is also a prime number, but this is a prime number that's not within the three that we are allowed, right? So this cannot be further broken down, so in this case, we return false. So now that we kind of remember what prime factors are and what they mean for numbers and for what we're trying to do, let's actually see how could we do this algorithmically. If we were given the number 20, we know that it could be, it could have factors that are three, that are any of these prime numbers, right? And if it does have a factor that is within, that is one of these numbers, then that means we can divide 20 by its prime factors, right? Let's try dividing dividing it by two as many times as we can, right? Is, is 20, first of all, divisible by two? Yes, it is. How do we know it's divisible by two? Because if we mod it by two, which means dividing this and taking the remainder, if we mod it, if we divide it by two and take the remainder, what's the remainder? The remainder is zero because two fits into 20, right? So that means it's divisible by two. So let's divide it by two. If we divide it by two, we get 10. Let's do the same thing with 10. 10 is also divisible by 2. We could check that easily by modding it by 2, but we know we don't need to do that. So again, let's divide it by 2, right? Now we get 5. Okay, 5. Is 5 divisible by 2? It's not, because if we, if we mod it by 2, we get remainder 1, so it's not divisible by 2, so don't divide it by 2, right? Okay, 
In our algorithm, what we would now do is check three, right? Is this divisible by three? And then keep, if it is, keep dividing it by three until it's no longer divisible by three. But in this case, we can see that it does have a remainder of two, so it's not zero, so then we can't divide it by three. Now, lastly, what we would do is take five and check, is this divisible by five? Yes, it is. So what does that mean for us? It's divisible by five. Okay, let's divide it by five. What happens when we now divide it by five? We get a one value, right? And now if we try running any of these prime factors on and checking if one is divisible by them, we're going to get a false, right? So we can't divide one anymore into you know, any of these three. So now we're, we've gotten to a value of one. What does that tell us? Does that mean, yes, it's, it's a, it's an ugly number or does that mean false? No, it's not an ugly number. Well, remember what I did at the beginning, right? I took 20 and then split it into three values. I split it into a two, a two, and then a five, right? Meaning that these are the prime factors of 20, right? If we multiply these three values, we get 20, right? So if we divide it by all its prime factors, right? We were able to take 20, right, from here, divide it by 2, then divide it by 2 again, and then divide it by 5, right? And then we got a 1. That means that all the prime factors of 20, right, since we were able to divide it all the way down to 1 using these three prime factors, that must mean that 20 only has prime factors that are made up of 2, 3, or 5, right? So since we were able to divide it down to 1, yes, that means it's an ugly number. Now, if we tried doing the same thing with 14, which remember we determined 14 is not an ugly number. If we try dividing 4 by 2, it works the first time, right? Then we get to 7. Okay. Then if we try dividing 7 by 2, you know, we find 2 is not a prime factor of 7. We can try the same thing with 3, right? It won't work. We can try the same thing with 5. It won't work. So the, the most we were able to reduce this 7 was only down to a 7. We were not able to reduce it to a 1. That means that 7 has prime factors that are not not within these three values. It has prime factors that are not two, three, or five. And yeah, we know that's true because seven is a prime factor itself. So, you know, in that case, we return false. So that's the idea of what we're going to do. It takes a lot of math to understand this problem. So I'm surprised that, that it's marked as an easy. I would say it's, it should probably be a medium, but it's probably easy just because the code is actually easy to write, but it's not easy to understand. So that's what we're going to do. If we're given a value n, it could be 6, 8, 7, whatever, we're going to first try dividing it by 2 as many times as we can, then divide it by 3 as many times as we can, then divide it by 5 as many times as we can, and then if we were able to reduce it to a 1, then we return true. If we're not able to reduce it to a 1, then we return false. Oh, and one last thing in the input, they say a ugly number is a positive integer and it could be that n might be negative, right? n might be less than or equal to zero. If that's true, well, then immediately we'll return false because that means it's not an ugly number. Now, the time complexity of this is kind of difficult to assess. You know, if we have a value that's infinitely large, it's going to definitely take a lot of time to divide it by these but I'm just thinking like, okay, let's say we had a value two to the power of 32. How many times could we divide this by two? Obviously 32 times. So is, does that mean the overall time complexity is something like log two, right? Because you could also say the time complexity could be log base five of n, but this one is larger. So if we're going by big O of n, I would say this is the time complexity, but I'm not even 100% sure. If somebody wants to correct me on that in the comments, feel free. But without further ado, let's jump into the code now. Okay, so now let's jump into the code. And if you made it this far, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Below, it really supports the channel a lot. And I'd be surprised if some people even make it to the coding section because I've heard that people just watch the drawing explanations. But so in the code, like I said, if the number is zero or negative, then we can return false immediately because an ugly number is just defined as being a positive number. Um, and then continuing, we're going to do just like I said, we're going to go through the three prime numbers that are uh, stated in the input. So we're going to iterate through either two, three or five. And for each of these prime numbers, we're going to do another loop. And what's that loop going to be? Well, basically, while n is divisible by uh, the prime number that we're looking at, either 2, 3, or 5, while it's divisible, which we can assess or we can determine by checking if the mod is equal to 0, if that's the case, what are we going to do? Then we're going to take n and divide it by 
p, right? So if n is divisible by 2, let's divide it by 2. I'm doing double slash because this is how you do integer division in Python. So we're going to continue this while loop while uh, that's the condition. And we're going to do it for all three of the prime numbers. And then at the end, we're going to return true if n is equal to 1. If it's not equal to 1, then we're going to return false. We can do that just by returning this conditional, right? We don't have to write it out. We can just return if it's equal to 1, then it's going to be true. If not, it's going to be false. And yeah, that's the entire code. So you didn't have to wait very long. And so as you can see, we got a very good runtime this time, 99%. But you can see I ran the exact same code a few hours ago and I got 77 milliseconds. So I never pay too much attention to the runtimes on leak code. They're usually not very helpful. But I do hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.